Hey everyone, it's Darby from Blue Television Games, and today I'll be showing you how to add games to your NES Classic. As you can see here, I have a bunch of games that weren't originally included. The first thing you want to do is go to the website in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. Once we get to this page, we're going to want to scroll down. Down here is the download section. We'll click on hackchi 2 exe We'll go ahead and save the file. I have my file on my downloads folder. Now we'll go ahead and open up hackchi 2 exe when we open it, we'll get a warning that this could possibly be a virus. Don't worry about it, it does not have any viruses in it at all. It's totally safe. Go ahead and hit OK. Since the file is a zip file, you're going to have to go ahead and extract it. We're going to go ahead and extract it right there in the downloads file. Go ahead and open the folder, go down to Hackchi, and open it up. Here we get a little hello and thank you for using the app message from the creator. It also tells you a way you can donate if you'd like to contribute to the maker. We're going to go ahead and hit OK here. Alright, and this is what it'll look like when you first load it up. Actually, I already have this on my computer, and I don't want to mess anything up, so we're going to open my old version. So as you can see, I've already added some games, but we're going to add some more today so you can see exactly how to do it. Alright, but before that, let's take a quick look at some bonus features in Hack 2 First, we can add more games, we can select presets, we can search, we can download covers for all games, we can dump kernel, flash original, flash custom, or uninstall, so you can actually go back to the original NES Classic and remove all extra games real easily if you want to do so. We have console types, so you can actually do this with the Famicom Mini as well. There's epilepsy protection options. And probably the most useful thing here is the controller hacks. You can actually set a button combination to reset back to the menu where you select the games on the NES Classic. Normally you'd have to hit reset on the console every time you wanted to do this. It's a big pain in the butt if your console isn't right by you. There's also interface hacks where you can extend font, remove thumbnails from the bottom, and you can disable the menu music. Max games per page, you can allow up to 90. I'd recommend doing 30 or something around there. You can also compress the box art to make the file sizes smaller. Then we have global command line arguments for experts only. We're not going to mess with that. Over under help, we have the GitHub page with actual releases, a fact, and about where you can donate to the author. All right, so let's add some games. First thing we need to do is scroll to the bottom left and click the add more games button. Once we do that, we'll navigate to where our ROM files are, and we'll select them here and hit open. Notice we get the pop-up message that one of the games isn't compatible with the NES Mini. You can just select yes and try it anyways. I always just play it safe so far and hit no. And there's a patch for Snow Brothers. Do you want to patch this game? We'll go ahead and hit yes. There's a patch available. It must be there for a reason. All right, now I'll show you how you can add box art to the games. First, we need to go up and find a game we don't have box art for yet. We scroll down here and notice Bomberman 2 does not have box art. Over here, you can also enter Game Genie codes, which will be applied to the games. We'll go ahead and head down here, and we can either browse for a file on our computer or hit Google. Google will automatically find box art for us. We have two different covers to choose from here, so you can just pick the one you like the best. I'm going to pick this one with the yellow border. I think it just looks a little bit cooler. So if we go up to Bomberman 2, you can see our new box arts there. Let's go ahead and do it with one more game here too as well. We'll do Bonk's Adventure. Click on the Google button. And there we go, we got the cover for Bonk's Adventure. Awesome. You can do this with all your games that don't have box art. The creator has made this super easy to do. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the USB power cable here, the one that you'd normally use to power up the system. We're gonna plug it directly into our PC. Once we do this, we're gonna hold in the reset button like so. Once you have it held in, you'll press the power button. Notice the light does not come on. After a couple seconds, this will pop up. If you haven't installed the driver yet, which you wouldn't have if you just installed the program, you're gonna to wanna to do that first. I've already installed the driver, so we're good to go. You don't have to reconnect the NES Mini as it says in step two. If you do it exactly how I told you, it'll still work fine. Once we click synchronize selected games with the NES Mini, you'll notice the little green bar filling up. This is putting all the games on here. I have this sped up eight times speed. It does take about a minute and a half to do this. Notice the power light came on. Now we have a message saying wait until it goes out to restart. Once the light goes out, you can hit the power button so that it's released once again, and you're good to go. The games are now on your system. All right, so now we'll take a look at the games I added. Balloon Fight, of course, was included on the system, but I did add Battletoads. It's a really fun multiplayer game, although tough. Battletoads Double Dragon, a little bit better than Battletoads, in my opinion. Bomberman I had to add, it's a classic game. Kind of surprised it wasn't on there originally. Bomberman 2, a super rare NES game. Another awesome Bomberman game. Bonk's Adventure, also super rare, added that. 
Bubble Bobble was included, but Bubble Bobble 2 was not. This is another super rare game on the NES, had to add it. Bucky O'Hare is a really cool game, it's a very tough difficulty. I also added this because of Dave from DGR. He's been looking for this game for a while, so I thought I'd add it on here for him. Cabal is one of my favorite old school NES games. It's a very fun game, also a great co-op game. Castlevania and Castlevania 2 were already on the system. Caveman Games is another great multiplayer game with a bunch of mini games, track and field style. Kokoron's actually a Famicom game, but someone has translated it to English and made it into an NES ROM. This is a really cool game where you can customize your character and it's a platformer. Love the game, it's super awesome. Darkwing Duck is another classic platformer I really enjoy. Deja Vu is a point and click adventure where you're trying to figure out your identity and figure out what happened to you. Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. as well as Double Dragon 2 and Dr. Mario and Excite Bike and Final Fantasy were all included on the NES Classic. The Flintstones, The Surprise of Dinosaur Peak is one of the most rare NES games there are. Actually, I haven't played that one. Friday the 13th is one of my favorite games. Horror-themed games are some of my favorite games of all time. This is definitely a classic to me. Galaga was included already on the system. Ghost and Goblins as well. And Gradius. Gremlins 2 obviously wasn't. Another great horror game based on the movie. It's a really fun platformer. I enjoy it a lot. Ice Climber was included. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. This was another game recommended by Dave from Dan Good Repairs. Dave covered this game on our other channel, Counting Pixels, just recently, and it's actually a game I used to own, so I wanted this on here for sure. Here's the folder we'll click to take us to the rest of the games. Next we have The Jetsons Cogwell's Caper, another really rare NES game I haven't gotten to try out, I thought it would be fun to put on here. Kid Icarus was actually included on the system, Herbie's Adventure also included. Kung Fu surprisingly wasn't. It's one of the first NES games I ever played and I really love this game. It's actually really fun and not that hard to beat. Little Samson's one of the most rare NES games there are. On top of that, it's also a fantastic game. Had to include this on my NES Classic. Maniac Mansion, of course, a lot of you know, is one of my favorite games of all time. Probably my number one NES game. Mario Bros was already included on the system as Mega Man 2. Metroid was also. A Nightmare on Elm Street, another great horror game. You can play up to four players on an NES. NES Classic doesn't support four players, sadly, but it's still a great game. Ninja Gaiden and also Pac-Man were both included on the system already. Panic Restaurant's another great rare game that's super fun, but hard to come by. Paperboy's a classic. I played that a lot as a kid. Had to include it. Punch-Out, of course, was included on the system already. River City Ransom's on the Mini Famicom, but not the Mini NES Classic. Definitely had to add this. It's a great co-op game. Roller Games is another beat-em-up game where you actually roller skate around and beat people up. It's kind of tough at first, but the more you get to know the game, it is actually quite fun and you can actually beat it. Shadowgate's another point and click adventure game like Deja Vu. Snow Brothers is a super awesome classic that's hard to come by, had to add it on here. Star Tropics was already included, as well as Super C, Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3. Sweet Home is a Japanese game on the Famicom once again that was translated to English and made into an English ROM. Went ahead and put it on here, it's an awesome horror game I've actually played through a little bit of. Definitely want to finish that at some point. Tecmo Bowl was already included on the system. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. A very awesome co-op beat-em-up, can't go wrong with that. Legend of Zelda was already included. Uninvited is like Deja Vu and Shadowgate, another point-and-click adventure game, this one's horror themed. And finally we have Zelda 2 which was also already included in the system. Let's go ahead and start up Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. And as you can see, it starts up just like any other game on the NES Classic would. Everything looks great, sharp, and HD. It's awesome. I'd pick Raph if I were to pick my favorite, but on the video games, it seems like Donatello and Leonardo always do the best because they have the further reach with their weapons. And here we are, playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES Classic. This is such an awesome game, and it's really fun having it on the system. Save states work perfect, as well as the return to menu hotkeys of holding down and hitting select. We can actually save our save states just like any other game on the NES Classic, up to four. Very awesome. Let's swing over and try out another game real quick. Let's just do roller games. It's a game I had as a kid that I thought was really fun. It's a beat em up game where your character is actually on roller skates. It is actually really tough because if you fall off a cliff, you die instantly. The hardest part in this game is dodging the cliffs and not dying. This guy looks like Christopher Walken, that always cracked me up. So here we are. It's been a long time, but it's nostalgic hearing this music and playing this game. I spent lots of hours playing this as a kid. Oh, but obviously not enough. 
All right, everyone, I hope this video helped anyone out that's trying to add games to their NES Classic. Let me know what you think of the games I've added, as well as let me know some other games you'd like to see me add, or games that you would add yourself to your own. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you around.